Hey there, Rodrigo here for Textualize and in this short video I want to show you a couple of other CSS styles that are related to the grid layout. So currently what I have is a 3x3 grid with only 4 placeholders and what I'll do is I'll change this, I'll fill the grid with a couple of placeholders. So for letter in range, sorry not in range, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I so for each of these letters, I'll create a placeholder with the given ID. So nine different placeholders laid out in a 3x3 three three grid. Now what I will show you is, and notice, maybe I didn't stress this. I don't think I did. I'm running the application with textual run dash dash dev. So what this does is it lets me change the CSS and see this, the changes live. So quite convenient. Now what I'll show you is, how you can change the sizes of the columns and of the rows. So let's start with the size of the columns. So there's a, a CSS rule called uh, grid columns. And now what you can do is you can specify the size of each column. So for example, if I say grid columns 10, then each column has a width of 10. But this grid columns, this can also be a sequence of values that applies to each column. So I can say 10, 20, 30, for example. And you can see that the third one is much larger than the first one. It's the triple. Um, if I, yeah, if I expand this, you can see that the third column now has tripled the width of the first one. Let's go back. And this sequence of values, this doesn't have to have the length or it doesn't need to match. So the number of values here doesn't need to match the number of columns because these things get reused in a cycle. So if I save it as is, notice that I have two values here, but I have three columns there. If I save it, you can see that the first column has a width of 10. The second column here has a width of 20. And the third column has a width of 10 again. So these values are reused cyclically 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 is this how you say it i don't know in a cycle so textual cycles through these values and applies them and this works in the same way for rows so maybe let's let's get rid of that so that we don't have to parse too much now we can say that each row i don't think this is probably too big yes so now each row has a height of 10 but this could also be for example i don't know uh, 20% or any other unit really. So this says that all of the rows have this length or this height, but now the, the same principle applies. So I can use different values here and they are reused cyclically. So notice how the, you know, there's some rounding here, but the first and the third ones have the same height. Maybe let's make it a concrete number. So the first and the third rows have the same height and the middle row has a different height. In this case, 30% or as I change it to eight, now it's eight. So grid rows and grid columns lets you change the height and the width of your cells. And one thing, one other thing you can do is you can use something that's called the grid gutter to create some spacing between the cells. So now let me turn this off. Uh, let me turn this off as well. So this is the default. The cells are evenly spaced, um, sorry, evenly distributed, and they're all together. And if I set a grid gutter of one, now there's one line or one character that's separating each of the cells. And this grid gutter, you can also specify the vertical and horizontal gutters um, separately. So something that's quite common is to have a, a gutter of a certain value that defines the vertical spacing between the cells and then you double that for the horizontal so that it looks the same. So if you go back to 1-1, one, one, you can see that the space that's separating um, cells in the same row looks much shorter than the space separating cells in different lines or in different rows. And so you, you will often see a double the value for the vertical spacing. So for example, 2, 4 will keep the same, the same look that it's 
evenly spaced out. So this is what Grid Gutter does. And this was all I had to show you in this video. I feel like I rambled for a bit, but apologies. Uh, I'll leave the Grid documentation links below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or join our Discord server to do so. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.